right, today we're going to talk about the Princeton offense. And coach is gonna, <laughs> coach is gonna help me because I have so many questions. It's it's like I, yeah. I have like a laundry list of questions yeah. I have. Um, so I'm gonna lob it over to you. You're gonna kind of explain what the Princeton office offense is. I think I know what it is, and then then I'll jump in and I've got tons of questions. So I'm gonna throw it over to you. Absolutely. So, and, and that's uh, you know, the Princeton's been around since since the '70s and '80s with Coach Krill over at Princeton University. And it started to gain a lot of traction, uh, especially after 96 when they beat UCLA. Um, and then it started to get a lot of traction. It's kind of gone away a little bit. And, it, and it's kind of tr find its finest way trickled into a lot of different places. Um, but what, it, what the Princeton is, it kind of goes to what our big problem uh, as coaches really is. And if, if you, you know, when you, when you look at coaches online and go in the clinics, they're all looking for, looking for a nugget here or a ball handling drill here or, you know, maybe an offensive set, offensive play, something deep. But what the print, what our biggest problem really is, is how do we win those games that we're not supposed to win? Or how do we win those games as underdogs? And Pete Carrill understood that. Uh, their, their goal at Princeton was get to the NCAA tournament, and then we're, we're going to play against teams and programs that don't have – or that they have athletes and players and talent that we do not have, and we need a way – to play against those teams. Right. They were always going to get the 15 or 16 seed. Absolutely. And right. they're always going to get the 15 or 16 seed. And said, we've got to, and, and in 89, they almost toppled Georgetown. That was the first 16 one, you know, breathtaking, uh, you know, almost upset, near upset. So the Princeton office was, they, they designed this thing so that they could find a way that they could compete against teams with su who, uh, superior talent, bigger, faster, stronger players. And that's how it, it, it came to life at Princeton University. And, and uh, so, so who's running it now? That's my question. Yeah. So, um, and, and I follow, I don't follow a whole lot of little schools. So I was always influenced starting out um, with, uh, with a little bit of Princeton and the Air Force Academy. It was just after Joe Scott left Air Force and went to Princeton. Okay. Um, but the big team's running it right now. Um, see, Bill Carmody was at Northwestern, but he, uh, uh, he's retired. He was at Holy Cross for a while, I think. He was at Holy Cross for a couple of years. Yeah, then I think he stepped down. Um, Chris Mooney is, is probably one of the top coaches running at Richmond. Um, and Joe Scott just got hired back at the Air Force Academy, which I am, I am super excited for. I went uh, – actually, when I got hired on as a head coach for the first time, I was 25 years old, I flew out to the Air Force Academy and watched them. He wasn't the coach at the time, um, but I, I was able to watch their practices for a week and talk to the coaches. Um, those are the two main ones that I watch. I think there's a couple of teams, uh, San Francisco, uh, out in California, and then um, there's another team out there just slipping my mind. There's, there's a handful, but there's not uh, – when I was learning it, it was Northwestern. It was uh, with uh, Bill Carmody. It was uh, Air Force with Joe Scott, um, Princeton University, and then John Thompson III was coaching it at Georgetown. Um, okay. And those were the big guys. Those were the inner circle guys. Um, and, and, and Jimmy, Jimmy Tillett was one of those guys too. Jimmy Tillett still coaching. He was at Samford back, back when I was learning it as well, but I don't know if he's still coaching or not. And how many, and, and, and what do you think a lot of high school programs run it? No, when I, so I, I was, I, my first head coaching job was in 08 and no one was running it. Um, so I'm, I'm in central Ohio, Steve. And okay. I would say, um, I probably know four or five, but only a couple that run it. What, what a lot of coaches are doing now, they're taking bits and pieces, but they don't run the entire system. Right. They'll, they'll just run the chin series or they'll just run a couple backdoor stuff that they get out of it, uh, but they don't run the entire system. And, and why? Well, that's, that's, that's the question. So there's, there's myths and stereotypes that, that come along with Princeton. And the number one thing I hear, and let me know if, if you hear this as well, it's, it's a slow down offense. We don't want to run a slow down offense. And the reason a lot of coaches think that way, and that's starting to change a little bit, but the reason everyone says that is because the Princeton offense is associated with Princeton University right. and Air Force and Northwestern in the Big Ten. Um, and those are schools that cannot recruit with the other schools in their conference. So they have to slow it down to compete. Right. You know, a part of part of basketball is controlling tempo. Whoever controls the tempo the best is probably going to have the best opportunity to win that game. Right. Um, but when you watch Georgetown, when John Thompson III was at Georgetown, when you watched uh, Herb Sendek at NC State, that was early 2000s. 
And uh, Chris Mooney in the A-10 with Richmond, they were actually running, I think, I think number one or number two in pace and scoring in the A-10 before uh, the season got shut down last year. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they run it. They run it. They get up and down the floor and, and run it well. So, um, so that's one of the big things is everyone thinks it's a slowdown offense. Uh, some of the other things that, that uh, hold coaches back is, one, it's, it's just too hard to learn. It's too complicated. Um, back in the 80s, 90s, they would say, well, it's just it, – it's, it's Princeton running. It's just for those smart guys. Um, but, but in all reality, it's, it, the offense itself is based on having good basketball players. So they, they think it's too hard to teach. They think their players um, have a tar- hard time running, and, and they think it's a slowdown offense. And that's why a lot of teams look at it and say, hey, it's really cool. It's really fun to watch, but I, I don't know – I don't know if we can. I don't know if I can teach that. It's too hard to learn. You can't find anything out on it. I don't know if my players are good enough to run in it, and I don't want to run a slow down offense. That's usually what keeps coaches from from running the offense. Those are the those are the big three. Those are the big ones, yeah. Yeah, and and it's like, well, I think you knocked a lot of the questions I was going to ask, but no, I think it's I think I think people think that you have to have like an Ivy League education to be able to run exactly. it. Exactly. No, and that that was <laughs> that was that was true, and and I I heard Joe Scott. Joe Scott. Um, he was at Air Force, went to Princeton, went to Denver. Now he's back at Air Force. But I heard him say in a, uh, um, at a conference once, he said that, that people, he would go out on the road and recruit. And they said, well, do you guys really recruit? Because he's like, he was just flabbergasted. No, I was like, yeah, of course we recruit. The offense is based on having good basketball players. Uh, in 96, 97, they had really good basketball players at Princeton. Um, but they thought it was just because they had those smart kids at Princeton that 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 they could run it. He's like, no, it's like we got to have good basketball players. That's that's so, so that's do, a, if you want to do any any offense well, you got to have good basketball players. Okay, so give me give me the so so I know coaches that are listening. Uh, give me the type of player you are looking for to run the Princeton. So I can see wheels turning right now, and it's sure, like, oh, yeah. I like this, I like this, but. What yeah. am I, you know, what am I, because there are offenses that work better with different types. Of, yeah. What am I looking for in my player to be able to do this? And, and this, this is a good point. So one thing that Princeton, what Princeton teams do is they don't um, box in their players. So a lot of us will have ones, twos, threes, fours, and fives. Hey, you're a one, you're a two, you're a three, you know, and what Princeton says is we want basketball players. We want players who can dribble, pass, and shoot players that can do two and three things at one time. So they can dribble, they can pass, and they can cut, you know, and, 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 and do all of that, you know, smoothly. Whereas, you know, a lot of uh, teams, you know, even, even colleges, um, they'll recruit the kids they want. So they want a, a solid point guard that just dribbles the air out of the ball, a two man that can only shoot a three man. That's just a slash or a four man. That's just power forward, play six feet, eight feet from the basket and the center can only play, you know, three feet, four feet from the basket. And Princeton wants those well-rounded players. And, of course, there's two ways to get that. Now, if you're in college, you can recruit those players. But if you're in high school, you need to develop those players. And, and I, I really think that uh, for us coaches in the game, we're in the business of player development. You know, we can't recruit in high school, or, or at least the, the honest ones aren't recruiting in high school. But if you get down into your youth program, you can develop those bigger kids to be able to handle the ball. And – we can develop those guards as they're getting older to be able to score in the post. We have very well-rounded basketball players that can all dribble, pass, and shoot. Uh, tough kids, uh, chip, they're like kids with chip on their shoulders, um, that they've got something to prove. Um, and I think we all love coaching those, ki- those types of players. So what happens – So okay, so I agree. In the, in the utopian world, sure. so let's say I've got – let's say I've got um, a big guy that can't come out – away from the basket or I have you know I'm in a small school and I've got a couple guards that just aren't real good with the ball yeah and I still run the Princeton absolutely and I tell you that that goes to another reason why coaches well that's not one that we talked not one of the big ones but that's one that's like well they'll say well I, they'll say well I don't have the player so if you don't have a five man that can step out and shoot the three um the, there's so much in this offense and I, I, I printed off my my playbook everything I've done through the years, it's about 70 pages right now. You can, if you know or, or know enough of the offense, you can adjust, you can remove this set in series. So if, if you want to run, uh, say, the point series or the open series that involves a five-man being on the elbow and the perimeter, you can skip those series out completely and just run stuff that's low post and chin. Or you can, you can combine different sets and series. Or we can even uh, – so a lot of kids, a lot of coaches that I've uh, – 
been working with and say, well, coach, but I have, I don't have a post player. Can we run this small ball? I said, like, like, you know, I've, I've got a six, three, six, four kid that's going to run the post, but I don't want him to touch the ball. Well, you can manipulate and you can adjust the Princeton offense to your players in that way where say, okay, let's run low post, but don't throw it down there because the, th- the, the, the cool, the secret about Princeton, there's always a next step. There, there's a move and a counter move, just like you would tell your, your guards and your players, hey, you need a move and a counter move to score. Well, Princeton's got a move and a, and a counter move. And if, and if they take that away, there's another counter. So if you have a, a five man that can't score, or you don't want to throw it to, we won't throw it down there, but we'll, uh, we'll run the next, we'll, we'll run point next, or we'll do what we call one time, two time, we'll get back into a chin or get back into low post or get back into point, get into a different series. Um, and if you have the five men that, that cannot run, that, that cannot shoot the threes, cannot dribble the ball, then we will hammer, we'll hammer our, our low post up. We'll throw it down there in the low post, and then we'll transition or phase into the next sets and series as those get taken away as well. So it's, it's uh, uh, a lot of coaches say, you know, um, you know, it, it just, you know, they, they always want to change their offense. every year you, you see that a lot there it's like well well now read and reacts hot now flex is hot and it, flex is starting to come back a little bit and but now i want to run a set play offense and, and what i like I, I like that consistency so, so your players come in already knowing what to expect right. they already know how to play the game it's it's a i i consider princeton kind of like a structured motion okay you know, oh, it, i like that not, yeah, i like it's, that it's not, a, it's not a pure motion like old bobby knight in the 80s but it it's structured and okay. you can adjust and change that to mold and fit your players. So um, can you, here's another question. Can you run this? Can you run this out of a break? Like from, sure. from our break into the Princeton offense, does that work? Cause I never really saw Princeton do that very often, but no, they, no, they didn't. And the reason you didn't see Princeton do that is because Princeton's not a transition team, but you see Richmond do it. Uh, you saw Georgetown and, and NC state do it. Um, uh, back in the early 2000s when, 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 they, were, when they were running it. Um, and, and one thing I did at the high school level is um, my third year was the year that we really took off. We, we, I got the head, jo- head coaching job. And then that third year is when our, 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 our juniors and seniors were, were really good. And we were very guard heavy. So what we did is we wanted to um, run what, what some coaches – I wouldn't call it – a lot of coaches call this the hybrid prints. And what I do is I just combined a couple of different, different offenses. So we were very guard heavy. We wanted to run. We were a pressure defensive team. So what we said, hey, guys, you know, we get a, a defensive rebound, a steal, or even an inbounds, let's go dribble drive first. So we would put our guards down in the corner, and we would run some dribble drive action that would flow seamlessly into our low post stuff so that we could, we could get out on a break and transition, um, and, and we would get right into our low post stuff. Uh, I've seen some other coaches – uh, you can also run, if you're just a secondary break, you like you push the ball to the floor, defense gets back, and you want to run some kind of stagger, stagger screen and duck in. Well, you can do all of that and see if you can get a three, see if you can get a duck in for your big. And if you don't do it, we'll just throw it to the wing, cut through, and we're into our Princeton. Or, or throw the guard to guard and get into our chin. There's always a way, um, if, if you plan it and, and put it together the right way, where you can mold a set player, a quick hitter, and just – flow right back into your Princeton, especially out of transition. So let's say I'm at a small school and I only got two good players. Can I run the Princeton? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. So here's, here's the way I think about it. It was, it was kind of the way that I was going through uh, because I was an assistant for seven years before I got my first job. I was like, you know, when I become a head coach, you know, what am I going to do when I don't have those players? Um, and, and if you, it doesn't matter if you, if you run a set play offense with two good players, what does a better team do? You know, they take those two players away. If you're playing, I'm going to make, I'm going to make three, four, five beat me. That's what exactly. I'm yeah, and, yeah. And, that, and those teams get slotted. They, they get beat. If, if, if that other team is superior, especially, especially athletically, they're going to take those two players away, especially if your two best players is just a, a maybe you've got a kid that shoots 60% from the three, but if you've got a kid that can lock him down and he can't get open, you take that kid out of the game. Same right. thing. If, if, if your other play, best player is your point guard, but if, if their point guard is, you know, quicker than yours or, or four inches taller and longer, they can bother them, take them out of the floor. So our philosophy is we want to develop that three, four, and five kid 
Uh, and we want – because your top two players can get theirs on their own unless they're being targeted, uh, the way I feel about it. But if those three, four, and five, if, uh, you can use a system to help. They, they can't score on their own, Steve, but if, if you can use a system that will put them in positions where they can get a good look at three or where they can get the defense off balance using some kind of misdirection, get them a driving angle of the basket, now the rest of that defense has got to be honest. And if that defense has got to be honest, they can't double that best player. They can't, they can't play a stop or like a no help on those two guys because your other three are going to be able to run that offense and execute. So I, I think what, what Princeton does is it keeps uh, that defense honest and it makes you focus on all five players because your, your two best players now, um, in, in, let's say in a system where they are, where the ball is in their hands 80% of the time, that better team's going to take them away. And Princeton, the ball is in everyone's hands pretty much equally. And what I found out uh, that that fourth year I was coaching, we only had one returning varsity player. And I was like, okay, it's like he's, a, he's that kind of kid that's going to, you know, hey, I don't trust my teammates. I'm going to have to take it over. I was afraid I was going to fight that. I didn't have to. He, he, I think, just learned instinctively, hey, I'm going to get rid of the ball. Go let them play. I know the ball is going to come back to me. And he could use the system or he could deviate and go create on his own and, and, and go score. And he had been very successful that year. So I, I, I think that what the Princeton does is it, it gets the – it raises the, the game of your role players and takes the focus off your best players so that they can't just target them defensively. Okay. What do you think, what do you think the most common offense is being played right now? It has nothing to do with Princeton, but what do you think? You, you know, um, cause I've been out for about four years because here's, here's another thing. If I were still coaching, I probably wouldn't be teaching other coaches how to run this because I was, right. it, it was very secretive offense and I kind of had that mentality. Um, I see the read and react a lot. Okay. Um, and with, uh, with Virginia winning, uh, a couple of years ago, I think a lot of blocker movers getting popular. Okay. So, so compare that. So compare this to those. So, and I'm not as proficient. I think read and react. Um, I think it's a lot less structure. So I do think your players need to be a little bit, a, I think you almost have to have, um, even a higher level IQ guys just to be able to pass and cut and move around like that. Or you're going to need some players who can, because there's a, as much passing and cutting as moving and as less structured that is, you almost have to have players who can deviate and take control. Because if you get stopped in that, they take something away there and one player makes a mistake, now your whole team is stuck. Right. Um, and, and I think with Princeton, you don't get that as much because there's always a back cut that gets the next guy open. There's always a, a ball screen and a slip. There's always something like that that can, uh, um, that can really help that. It really kind of helps them move along. But if you don't have that player who can deviate and, and if you don't have if, if Spurs don't have Kawhi Leonard back when he got hurt against the Warriors, you know, he kind of calmed everyone down. He could do all that, but right. without him, they kind of struggle. Um, and, and I think if you don't have those kind of playmakers, um, I, I think, I think you have to have playmakers when, even when you run the triangle offense, I think the triangle, it's very similar to Princeton. Um, the philosophy is very similar, and the way you teach it is almost identical. There's just different movements. But it, it's going to put you in better position to go one-on-one, -on -one, um, and you have to have that playmaker. Whereas at Princeton, it's going to put you in position to get an open look, get a back door, get a wide open three, shift the defense left and right, shift the defense forward and back. Right. I like that. I like that idea of – and from some of this run, read, and react, it's – there is yeah. – in some of this run, the swing and flex, sure. it does give you – it gives you almost too much freedom sometimes. Yeah. And I love that maybe this is a perfect mix between it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, kind of like you want to, you want to, you want to have control, but you want to have too much control. So what we'll put right. our offense in, but I'm not on the sideline telling our kids what to run. Right. You no, know, because we'll have certain players that want to run point screen away. And I'll have another player that likes getting into open and I'll have some little players though. Once they get the ball in a certain spot, they're like, this is not my spot. I'm going to run and do the next thing in the offense and wait until the ball gets to my spot. Hey, now I can attack. Now I know how to score off this one. This is where I'm good. Uh, your, your players, uh, what they do is they learn, especially your role players, they learn where to um, – they're going to get their shots, their shots, the shots that, that they can make. They know where they're going to get uh, – they know when the ball is coming to them. They know when they can drive or when – if they're not a driver, they know when they're going to get their wide open look. Um, so I, I think it, it – I think it's a – we're reading reacts more a little bit freer. If I've got that role player to catch the ball in a spot that he's not comfortable with it, you got to have a way to get the ball back out of his hands and keep running your offense. 
Okay, coach. So, so explain to me how I can learn more about this. Yeah. So we are actually uh, putting together a, a free three day training. Uh, it's a, a three day mastermind. We call it a mastermind because we're doing it live and we're getting feedback. Um, and we're going to do that here probably in a month or so. Okay. Um, but uh, to learn when that's going, we haven't picked the date, but to learn when that's going, go to uh, teachhoopsprinceton.com okay. uh, and either register or sign up on the wait list. And then we'll send you an email when you can do that. And we're going to uh, do as much, uh, we're going to teach as much Princeton as we can in three days, uh, about an hour and a half, two hours uh, a, a day, and, okay. and just get as much as we possibly can. So in. you give them enough that they will kind of sure. know. This is, yeah, so this yeah, is, so this is what I talked to coach about. I said, if you're going to do this, you got to give yeah. enough that the person knows that they should either yeah, walk so down this road do, yeah, or not walk down this road. Overwhelmed. Right. Um, we're going to really get the fundamentals and foundation down. So you can kind of look and say, okay, see, I can see that. That makes sense. I, 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 you know, I, I didn't think I could do it, but I, I see how you break it down. Slightly. I don't think my players can do it, but okay, now I understand better right. how I can run this with my players. Right. And I, and, 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 and to be honest with my audience, some of you, some people will come to that and they'll, they'll sit and watch all six hours and it might not be right for them this year. Sure. That's okay. Sure. I mean, that's okay. Absolutely. But, but, but yeah. I, I think after that, you're going to know, this is the right fit or not the right fit. I mean, that's yes, what we yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and one, I said, one of the big problems a coach don't want it because they think it's very complicated and I've really tried to make it as break it down simple. So it's easier to understand because it is very complicated. If, if you go talk to a Princeton guy, if you go talk to Joe Scott or you go talk to one of those guys, they have their own language and right. I've adopted a lot of their language, but tried to simplify it a lot where you wouldn't understand it at all when you talk to them, but when you talk to me or, or watch me on the board, I'm going to break it down a lot. A lot easier so you can uh so you can understand it so, well, i yeah, think that's really important too yeah. language is so important yes it is how you talk about things is important and i think you'll be able to you'll be able to get some of that language things down in those three yeah and there's a lot of different ways there's a uh, i don't know coach if you're familiar with jim burse and he's one of the guys um that really started sharing the offense back in the, the late 90s early 2000s um but but they called uh the language that they use, and I'll, I'll talk about that on the three day. You'll, okay. you'll have to come and see that. But, um, but the language he uses is different is completely different from the language that Princeton guys use. And I'm kind of in the middle, okay. uh, because there's a lot of good stuff here, a lot of good stuff here, a lot of very you know detailed, complicated stuff there. And, and we want I wanted to break it down so it's as easy as possible to put this in. It was great. It's it, great. It will be a great mastermind. Yep. So thank yeah. you, Coach. That's perfect. Thank you. Yep.